Hey, what is going on YouTube? I know it's been a few weeks. Today I wanted to get a video out. This video was going to cover a Python script that I had developed in order to automatically download Tenable Security Center reports. As you may know, if you do use Tenable, there's no intuitive way or any way provided by Tenable to download the reports other than selecting one by one, right clicking or click on the report and then downloading it that way. In today's video, I do not have access to the Security Center server or anything like that. What I'm going to do is point out two resources that you could use in order to develop this script for yourself and develop any other scripts. And also we are going to cover the script that I had developed and go step by step, line by line on how I got there and what it is used for. Don't forget, if you enjoy this content or if you're looking for content similar to this video, drop a like, subscribe for more, and let's get started. So the first thing I want to point out is the Tenable SC or Tenable Security Center API guide. This guide lays it out pretty pretty good uh, goes through everything the one that we are going to focus on today is going to be the reports because we are going to automatically download the reports based on certain criteria that we set within the script and here you can see we have report so the first one that we're going to take a look at is just the uh, report and the get request again we're going to cover this in the script i just wanted to highlight this resource kind of tells you exactly what's going on here so we have the url or the portion of the url or of the API that we are going to request access to or re get a report from and that's going to be slash report and as you can see it gets the list of all the reports here's the allowed fields so in the URL that you are passing or requesting you could pass through certain fields to get these uh, different data or just select just a few of them uh, with that being said the ones that are star which I think is annotated somewhere Yes, it always uh, comes back is with one star for two stars. It comes back if fields list is not specified on get at all. So that's something to keep in mind. Just a few other things that gives a response or an example response. Uh, and also you got different methods that you could use. So another get request if you want to get report information for a specific ID, which is what we were going to do in the script. This is something that you could use. And if we keep on scrolling down, we have the ability to email it. We have the ability to copy it. And in all of those, or not in all of those, but in some of those, we also have the ability to change, uh, make changes to those. So that's something that I'm going to describe in another video, which can be seen here under the report definition. And then you can go down and uh, find the patch request and you could actually make changes. But that's not for today's video. So let's go ahead and um, continue on with this script. One thing to note, I am not covering today the specifics behind auth authentication using API as I do not have access to the server, so I can't really show you how to get your API key. Essentially, you're gonna log in and you're going to find the user. You're gonna right click the user and then create an API key. And then if you go into here, it kind of gives an overview of their authentication. It's not very straightforward with uh, on how to do it with Python. There's not really much resources out there either on Google. So I did want to get this video out there to maybe help others that, that uh, run into this. Um, API is definitely useful. You could automate a lot of your processes and save a lot of time. The next resource that I want to point out is PyTenable. In this particular instance, I did not use PyTenable as it did not have natively scripted for downloading reports. These are all the different functions that are already built in within PyTenable. So you could do a lot here, um, but for what for today's example, we could not use PyTenable natively to download the reports. I think there are some ways to get in there to use like general things. Maybe you could find more information on the common themes or something like that. I did not dig into it deep because the, the Tenable API was good enough for me to jump in and, and knock it out. Let's go ahead and take a look at the script. So like I said, we're gonna go over this line by line, uh, kind of describe my thought process when I was developing this script. I am not a full-time Python developer, although I am, I do believe I am getting better at it. This is not perfect, so please do not take this for, um, just take it for what it is. I was able to get what I needed out of it, and I hope it could help you at least get you on the right path to what you need out of it. So starting from the top, we have different libraries that we are going to import. A few of the, of the important ones, actually they're all pretty important, but some you could do without. So for instance, import requests, you definitely need the request library. You could also use the PyTenable library for the request function of this. 
but we uh, ended up using the request library for authentication and performing the different get requests. The next line you can see request.packages disable warnings. If this is not uh, this is not necessary for all environments. For those environments with self-signed certificates or any certificate issues, you could um, you will need to use this if you want to get it out of your prompt. Now, it's not necessary, but it's something that I did to get that out of my when I'm running the script. Next line we have import JSON. The data that is passed through the API when we do the get request is JSON. So we need, we need to do that in order to process that data. CSV, this is not necessary, but I use it because I stored the report IDs in the CSV beforehand. So each time it runs a script, it reads the CSV for these report IDs in order to perform the download for the specific um, reports that I would like to download on a weekly basis. Then we got from date time import date time. Again, this is not necessary. It was just used for my script because I use it not only to um, create a directory to store these downloads when this download happens. I also use it to um, base my download off of. So for instance, it has to be, um, the report has to be generated within a certain time frame, and that's how I get that. We use the OS library in order to create a directory on the file system in order to store these reports as the script goes on. So the first thing, as you can see here, is the get request URL. So here you're going to use your IP address or your uh, whatever, if you have a DNS name or a fully qualified domain name for this server, you could go ahead and use that here. Here's the rest. Here's the API I was talking about. So it's gonna be slash rest slash report. Here are the fields that I mentioned in the beginning of this video. So in this case, all I wanted was the ID, the name and the start time. Here's how we were able to authenticate. So here's the header. And you want to pass through the access key and the secret key. If you are going to use my script, you are going to replace the access key and the secret key as I had highlighted here. Replace it with your own, which you will get from if you generate your uh, key within Security Center. We're going to create a variable named today. We're going to get the date of as this script is executed, and we are going to format it in a certain format, which will later be used to our benefit. Then we have a the get request. So in this case, we are going to assign that to the res or as result whatever you would like a variable and you're going to perform that using the request library and the get function within that and you're going to pass through the url the headers and the verify this is to deal with the certificate as i said in our environment we were at that at this time when we were using the script we were not using a certificate or a valid certificate and it would pass through an error and we did not want to verify so that's how we got around that. Next, we're going to convert the data that we get. As you can see, we're going to assign it to the data variable and we are going to pass through the res, which is what we got here from the get request. And we are going to use the JSON function in order to turn that data into JSON. And then we're going to count all the reports in this response. So we're going to assign that to report underscore count. And then we are going to this is now a list. Well, we're getting not a list essentially, but we're getting the um we are essentially parsing out this data that's now in JSON format. And to do so, we will pass through the response and then the usable, and that gets us the the um report that we need or that section of that data that we need, and then we are going to get the length of that, and that gives us a report count. Then we have the reports path. In here, you are going to, um, this is where I pass through a directory or the today variable using an F string. Um, and then right below that, we want to check if this path exists. So we're going to use the OS library and we're going to say is, uh, is directory essentially the function that's within the OS library. And we're going to pass through that path. And if that is false, meaning that the directory does not exist, then perform this function or this condition 
and that is the make directory reports path. There are several ways to go about the next part of this script. I do want to mention that I forgot I ended up changing it when I use it. I am no longer using uh, CSV in this portion of the script. So you could ignore that. Um, as you can see here, I had made the original list empty and I put a note in there saying not currently used for anything, maybe used in the future for different functions, which I had some ideas. Maybe I'll use that in the future. But as of, for this time, I'll show you how I went about it. So we had initiated a counter and assigned it to an integer of zero. We said while counter or while zero is less than report count, which is based on the get request that we had got up here and then did the, got the report count over here. So while it is less, this loop will continue to run. Again, we're going to go into this JSON data. So the way that it was returned, this was kind of one of the first times I dealt with this much of a nested JSON format dictionary. It, it got pretty intense for me. I felt like it at the beginning, but I was able to knock it out pretty quick and figure out how to, how to parse through it and get through it. So we are going to pretty much assign so the, uh, during this first iter iteration, we're going to get the report and assign it here. So this is essentially going to go into here and then it's going to pull that first um, position of that and assign it to report. That's how the counter is going to be used. And then we are going to get the name. So that's how we get that. And this is all within that JSON data. So if you were to pull a the raw data and you looked at it, you would see name. And then there will be a value next to it assigned to that. That's how you would get it and assign it. You would do report, which is the entire report. And then since we want to get the name, just like as you would do in a Python list, you're going to put name and then you would put that there. ID, we get the report ID, report time. This is kind of where the important part is to get the, the reports that I wanted. So I use the report time to perform that. And I put a note here because it took me a couple minutes to figure out the time format that was used and it is in Unix timestamp. So I had to convert that, which was pretty easy. And then I wanted to get it to that same format that we had from now, the, uh, the today variable that we defined earlier. So we could go ahead and compare. And in this way I could use that to download the script that is today or during a certain block period of, or time period. Um, so, Here's a condition that I had set. So I said, if this could be anything you want, I had a, a condition there to look for something in the report name. So maybe this is like windows. So if windows in report name, or if anything, I had a certain way that was within our environment, able to define the certain reports that we wanted within that name, as it was a block of them. And then to break it down further, if that converted report time equals today, so if that report was generated today, then continue on and perform this. And so here's the ID list. So we do get that report ID and we throw it in there. So we're, like I said, we're not using the CSV portion I had mentioned earlier in this script. And then we are going to create a download URL variable. And here we have the, we're again using an F string. Here you're going to define the IP address of your server. And we are going to pass through the report ID, which we got earlier. And that again, using that F string. So we're, during this iteration, we're able to pass through that report ID into the, um, the get request, or this is going to be a post request is what the API requires. And so as you can see here, we assign that to the R variable and we say request.post. And we're passing through that new download URL that we had just created. Again, passing through those headers and then verify equals false. And lastly, we are going to assign local file path. And inside that directory that we created earlier, we are going to assign the report name, which is what we got up here, dot PDF. The cool part about this is uh, when you're writing files, so since this is a PDF file, you have to pay attention to what you use here. If you use the write, that would write the string value and not the binary data that is passed through with this original data that's being sent through. Um, so first you pass through the local file path, 
this is uh, right binary, I believe, if I remember correctly, and as file. So you could use the file to write. And then we're going to pass through r.content, which is the requests.content. There's a few other things that you could use here if you ever needed to in the future. Look it up. Pretty useful for troubleshooting. For instance, if you wanted to print a screen, the r.status code, you could get to see if maybe you're getting a two, uh, like a 200 or a 404 or 502 or anything like that troubleshoot any errors that you may be having and lastly is counter equals counter plus one this is just a way to iterate through that report list because now that the counter goes up to one or two for instance it'll be used here and we'll get to that next iteration of the data and it will go all the way up until the report or the length of the report is no longer less then the counter and that will exit the script and all of those files will be downloaded to the, the directory that we had specified in the script and that's going to conclude today's video i enjoy going over scripts uh, i actually enjoy writing scripts a lot i like automating things a lot um, so i hope you were able to enjoy this video i actually have a bunch of more scripts coming with similar content or with like a similar um concept i guess as we are going to be automating some vulnerable vulnerability management functions within Tenable Security Center. Again, since Tenable does not provide me a free um, instance of their software, I'm not able to really use it and highlight it and show you how this is in use. I hope going through the script and giving you a good explanation of the various functions and stuff that I had defined in the scripts helps you out. Just to give you an example of the next script that we may cover if uh, I get to it is um, so today we downloaded the reports the next one I use is I actually created an API script that reaches out to the server and updates the definitions in a report because our definitions in our reports have like dates ranges um, asset counts and all that stuff so I'm able to, to parse all different CSVs pull this data together compile it all and then use that script to update the, um, the reports within Tenable before downloading it. So I can do that all on a weekly basis. There's a few other things that I also got going on. So pay attention to the channel. Drop a like. Subscribe for more. As always, never stop learning.